2019 is nearing its end and we are about to enter another decade, 2020, which just is ridiculous. I am 21 years old. I've grown up with little bits of tech my whole life from the early Game Boys to uh, you know the Game Boys again now because I'm obsessed with them. And uh, yeah, today we're gonna be taking a look at my top five retro items that I still very much use today. Now, all of these things sort of vary between the 80s and even some of the cases we're gonna be looking at 70s items to around about the mid 90s. So without any further ado, let's take a look at item number one. Now, one of the things I started looking at on my channel is personal cassette players or Walkmans as Sony called them. This is a massive part of my day-to-day -day life. I absolutely love music and I absolutely love retro tech and handheld stuff and the Walkman just fits the bill absolutely perfectly. This one right here is the TPS L2, which was released in 1979 that started the whole thing. You may recognize this from Guardians in the Galaxy. It was a, uh, a prop that was used by Chris Pratt, uh, the Star-Lord, um, to show you know the sort of era that they were in. And he played some cassettes that his mum had made him, Awesome Mix Volume 1 and 2 and they are absolutely fully functional. Trying to get a hold of these things is pretty difficult. As I mentioned, this isn't gonna be an in-depth how to find these things online, but you can pick up cassette players on Amazon. Now, they are gonna work, they are gonna you know, play music from a cassette, but they're not exactly the highest quality stuff. If you want some pretty decent stuff, I'd actually stay away from this line here and go for something like this, which is a Walkman DD Quartz. Cassettes sound fantastic, definitely use a good pair of headphones you might be familiar with these sorts of things as the walkman now if you want to go around looking cool then definitely go ahead and use those but if you want some decent things i use a small pair of bose headphones and honestly it's so difficult to hear a difference between a cassette and an iphone unless you're getting up the sound waves and looking you know at the different sounds and all that sort of stuff you're never really going to tell some people just want to listen to music if you're into retro tech cassettes are cool Coming in at number two is the Nintendo Game & Watch. These things are a beautiful, beautiful example of retro gaming tech. Bit of a segue from music, but retro nonetheless. This right here is Donkey Kong. This is one that I have done a refurb on, although Game & Watches also had, you know, releases of Mario Bros games or Mario Bros. And they're absolutely lovely little devices. They're the perfect, simple, bite-sized, pocketable bit of gaming tech. It's a very functional thing. I've obviously had to repair it, um, which is one reason why these sorts of things are very difficult to get a hold of working. They're also quite expensive. That's a factor to take into consideration, but they're very fun. They're very functional. They're very usable and they look bloody awesome. Although I'm really bad at these games because they're all sort of timing based and I get a bit too keen and then run forward and get smacked in the face with a barrel. But yeah, very awesome little games. There we go, that's item number two. That is the Game & Watch by Nintendo. And these are 1982, 1983, and 1982. Very 80s tech. Coming in at number three, film cameras. The most functional of them all. They literally just work right out of the box. You can pick them up from charity shops for two or three pounds. I'm not joking, go to a charity shop, find them at flea markets. Obviously eBay is where you're gonna get the ones that you really want. They're gonna be more expensive. People know what they're selling on eBay. These things are amazing. Pretty easy to use. They're, they do look quite technical and quite advanced. They're lovely pieces of uh, Japanese technology. This is a Yashica Electro GSN 35, bit of a mouthful. It was used in The Amazing Spider-Man by Andrew Garfield. Obviously I do like film props. I've got the TPSL2, as I mentioned, from Guardians of the Galaxy. These things are absolutely lovely with metal rings and dials and um, this is how you advance the film and then you press the shutter and you get just lovely feedback on everything. Um, they all function really well. You do get some which have various different issues relating to light. Obviously film is covered in a chemical that is light resistant and that's how when the shutter opens and closes it lets the light in and the information is retained in the chemicals and then when it's then processed at the end of the film's life you can then pick up the, 
I don't even know how to describe all this stuff. I don't need to know about that stuff because you just pick up some film for a couple quid, take some photos, get them developed, and it's an amazing experience finding the photos that you took again and reliving those moments because on your phone it's so dead you just take a photo and then you share it online and everyone goes woo but a physical photo that you've taken of a memory that is it's it's raw it's to do with light it's not a digital thing it's just beautiful this is a very awesome passion of mine uh, this one is an olympus om10 quite possibly the most generic film camera everyone uses these they're just lovely 50 millimeter lens is a lens that will just do you everything that you need it to do portraits landscapes uh, everything awesome little cameras i love film this is my item number three. Item number four. By no means is this in order, by the way. I just really wanted to uh, show all of these things first before we get into the obvious ones. This channel is about handheld gaming. Game Boys are my favorite things of all time. This is the one that started the whole thing off, released in 1989 in Japan. Gunpei Yokoi, again, behind this wonderful piece of technology. Although mine just broke, I haven't actually got a replacement screen lens for this yet. Um, this thing, again, was not even using the most advanced technology of the time. A couple years later, we had the release of the Game Gear and the Atari Lynx, which were backlit with colour. Um, obviously, this is not backlit with colour. We'll get onto that in a second. These things are absolutely lovely. There's a lot of modifications out there and different peripherals available. For example, I've just made a video on this. You can put your games onto a micro SD card, meaning you don't have to carry around physical games with you. Put it into the back of the Game Boy and then you've got your whole games library in a small little form factor like this. Playing Game Boy games is something that I absolutely am obsessed with. It's a massively functional thing, you know. This is by no means a video about gimmicks and things that look cool. These are all fully functional items. So the Game Boy Color Light is another one that I have. It actually has a modern LCD screen in here, which is also transflective. So you can go outside in the sun and it will still look as clear, uh, but obviously it's backlit LCD screen so you can play it in the dark as well. And with the EverDrive in conjunction with this, it's just an absolutely incredible piece of equipment. So that is item number four, the Nintendo Game Boy. So that is gonna conclude the handheld technology side of my top five retro items. I hope you'll agree, they're all very functional, um, all such beautiful items. I mean, look at this table right now, it's just lovely. But let's take a look at item number five. Item number five is a bicycle. That's right, this thing is an old 80s Peugeot bicycle that I have recently done a video on, although the video has not been released yet. This was an old frame that I bought on a bike that was 25 pounds, got it sandblasted, painted it myself, put the new stickers on, and then I turned it into a fixed gear bicycle. It's a really awesome, very functional bicycle, which looks amazing doesn't it i mean you can't really argue it it just does look absolutely lovely um bikes are really expensive you know my a mountain bike that i have i think was like 700 pounds which is just super expensive but this thing a couple hundred quid and you can buy ones that have working components on them already and then all you have to do is give it a bit of a clean maybe put a new chain on it or just oil the one that's on there already super functional very nice looking this is item number five so that is going to conclude my top five retro items that I still very much use to this day that I swear by and get a lot of entertainment out of. My bicycle is very practical, as is the camera. It does work very well. Obviously, you're limited to, you know, however many photos on the film, usually sort of 35, I think. Cassettes, you do have to get an actual physical cassette. 
Game Boys, you have to replace their batteries. Game and Watches, again, batteries. But for the small amount of inconvenience that may or may not come associated with retro items, I think they're beautiful, they're very functional, and uh, I really enjoy using them. But let me know what items you use and which ones you think that would be a very good fit into your life and the things that you enjoy in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, press like. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. It won't stand up, so I'll put it upside down.